Welcome to another installment in our Greek food video recipe series. My name is Sam Sotiropoulos and I am the Greek Gourmand. Today's recipe is Galatopita. Galatopita is simply milk pie. This is the single most popular recipe on the blog at GreekGourmand.com. It's very easy to make and will be very popular with guests, friends, family and the kids. Now the ingredient list could not be any simpler. We have five cups of milk. I use two percent fat milk. One cup of sugar, white sugar. One cup of semolina, finely ground semolina, also known as farina. A half cup of unsalted butter. And three eggs. Okay, our first step is to boil the milk, or at least bring it close to a boil, over a medium heat on the stove top. Of course, we have to be careful that we don't burn our milk, so here's my trick. I add the butter to the pot at this point, and by waiting for it to melt, I am able to gauge the heat of the milk. When the butter has completely melted, and the milk has begun to steam, we are ready to move on to our next step, which is to add the sugar and to incorporate it well by stirring it. Then we proceed to add the semolina to the milk and when we've added it we are going to immediately switch to our hand whisk or as in my case the wand blender in order to mix the semolina thoroughly into the milk mixture. Now if you're using a hand whisk this process can be rather tiring so if you do happen to have one on hand the wand blender is the way to go with this. After a span of about five minutes of constant mixing the mixture will start to thicken noticeably. It will develop into a, a heavy, very thick, cream-like consistency. And this is what we're looking for. Once we've achieved this, we're going to turn off the element and remove the pot from the heat and set it aside to cool. Now the mixture has been cooling for approximately five minutes and that's great. You'll notice now that it's really, really quite thick. Uh, we let it cool so that we don't add the eggs when it's hot and they cook before actually being incorporated in the mixture, which is what we want to do now, and we'll do it in stages. I've beaten the eggs ahead of time, and we're just going to add them one little bit at a time, and mixing thoroughly in between uh, pourings into the mix. Now, for those of you who are using uh, a whisk, a hand whisk, things are going to start getting tougher at this point. As we continue to add the egg to the mix, the mix will thicken accordingly and it will become a little more difficult to mix by hand. So I do recommend the use of a wand blender if you happen to have one on hand. It makes for an excellent all-around kitchen tool. My grandmother would have killed for a wand blender with a mixer attachment like this. This is her recipe after all. Now there is another variation in which we use phyllo. We line the baking pan with phyllo and then we fill it with the mixture. But we're not going to be using phyllo at all in this uh, recipe. It's not required in actuality. Now once the eggs have been thoroughly incorporated into our mixture, we're ready to move on to pouring it into the baking dish. All right, we are ready now to pour our mixture into our baking dish. I use a stoneware baking dish as I find it produces superior results. I have buttered the sides and bottom of the pan with some unsalted butter and we're just going to pour our mixture directly into the pan making sure to spread it about evenly as we do not want to touch the surface of our milk pie with a spatula to do so after the pour. There we have it ready for the oven. I have preheated the oven to 350 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius and we're just going to place our baking dish on the middle rack of the oven just like that then we are going to close things up and we'll be revisiting the oven in oh approximately an hour or so to check on the status of our pie now exactly one hour and ten minutes have elapsed since we put our pie in the oven and there's a couple things I want to point out here the surface of the pie has uh, has risen and created a nice dome-like shape and you can see the brown the nice brown even brown color over top on the surface of the pie I could leave it in here for a few more minutes to brown even further but I'm pretty happy with this result so I'm going to take it out of the oven at this point and set it aside to cool this is not the surface of Mars we're looking at this is in fact the surface of our cooled galatopita the 
Dome has subsided somewhat. This is perfectly normal. Uh, you can take the opportunity to fill the top surface area there that has sunk in a little bit with a jam or a fruit preserve. I do not generally put anything over top of the entire pie, though I do enjoy serving individual slices with a rose petal preserve. A spooned over top, perhaps a teaspoon or a tablespoonful. It's a traditional Greek spoon sweet and it is an excellent complement to this particular dessert. So there you have it. Easy to make, easy on the pocketbook, and the kids are going to love it. For more great Greek food recipes, visit our blog at GreekGourmand.com. Thanks for watching. May your hearts be filled with love and your stomachs with Greek food. Until next time.